Hello, I'm David from Eden Motor Group, and once again, we're back in the studio today. We're here to talk about regenerative braking. So, what is regenerative braking? You may have heard about it through electric car adverts, or you may have heard of it through a motoring show, or by any other means, but we're here to make it simple. Put simply, regenerative braking is the process in which a car is going to regain some of the lost energy from deceleration back into the system. Essentially using engine braking, your conventional brakes, or by simply lifting your foot off of the accelerator pedal, this is actually wasted potential energy. Regenerative braking is far more common on modern cars than what we would deem as classic cars. The first cars ever to use regen braking was actually in 1967 by American Motors. This car was called the Amitron. The car used a combination of nickel and lithium fluoride batteries which gave a sustainable range of somewhere around 150 miles. It was just very slow. The car never actually made it to market, but it did spend a long time in the production stage. But due to a series of buyouts, Renault in 1983 and Chrysler in 1987, the car never saw the light of day, at least to the general public. So that was the first car that introduced regenerative braking, but what about modern cars? The most common form of regenerative braking involves an electric motor functioning as an electrical generator. Now, it has been a long, long time since I've done GCSE science, but from what I can remember from way back when, is that an electric motor is simply a dynamo. Well, essentially a dynamo. This is a magnet with either a rotating copper or rotating magnet, or sometimes a combination of both, which is used to spin a shaft, or the shaft is used to spin it. Essentially, this is the way an electric motor works. If electricity is inputted, the shaft will spin. However, if the shaft is turned through kinetic energy, then the motor will actually generate electricity. This is a lot more simple than it actually is. Modern day electric motors are a little bit more complex than that, but simple motors essentially follow this principle. And while you're here, don't forget if you'd like us to go more in depth into how electric motors work, leave a like and subscribe and hit that little notification bell. And that way I know that you would like to see more. So in a modern car, a electric motor with regenerative braking can run into different directions as explained before. One way it moves and the car will move, the other way will simply recharge the battery. Modern cars are clever, and by the act of simply lifting your foot off of the accelerator, modern cars can generate electricity from that. You don't even need to actually brake. And because the motor is spinning the other way, this effectively creates resistance effectively slowing the car down without the actual use of your brakes. So it acts as a dual function. You're slowing down and generating electricity. Some modern cars can even use this to even greater advantage with having various stages of regen braking. The more that is inputted, the more braking force is applied. And some cars can even have one pedal driving where all you have to do is release your foot off the accelerator and you don't even need to touch the brake at all. In electric cars, this can all be used together to extend range as much as possible. Unfortunately, due to the laws of thermodynamics, we'll never be able to fully recharge a battery through this system. In this house, we obey the laws of thermodynamics. Don't think that means the efficiency of regenerative braking systems is terrible, however. While traveling at high speeds, modern regenerative braking systems can actually recoup somewhere between 20 and 70% of the kinetic energy that would have otherwise been lost to the world. This all sounds wonderful, but there are some very small disadvantages as well. The lower the speed is, the less efficient that this system works. Another downside is that the brake pedal can sometimes feel numb when this system isn't incorporated correctly. Most manufacturers have got all of this sorted by now, but there may still be some on the market that just feel a little bit numb when you're pressing that brake pedal. And that's pretty much everything you need to know about regenerative braking. If you want to see a car with regenerative braking, then if you go up there, you'll see a little road test of a car that's got that included. Maybe, of course, you want to see more videos like this in the future. All that means is you have to click the like button, the subscribe button, and the notification bell. That lets us know that you are enjoying this kind of content on our channel. 
Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the comment section down below.